Uh, excited to have you. We connected actually, ironically, through Wayne Percy. Um, okay. You were on his his show, as was I. You had a more of a bigger stint on the show as on his podcast. But um, we connected. It was an inspiring story, and I'm excited for you to share with the audience that you, like many consultants and coaches, were in the sales world for many, many years. I believe pharmaceutical, uh, six-figure job, successful, doing all the right things, and you left it all to be uh, a personal coach, uh, a corporate coach. And, and so we're excited. You have podcast, Coach C, um, lots of good stuff going on. So why don't you tell us a little bit about where you were, why you were, you know, you were successful, why you decided to make the leap into the industry that you're in now. I'm, I'm so glad you asked that because I made the leap into coaching and consulting 27 years ago. So, wow. yeah. So I had a very short stint in the pharmaceutical industry. When I graduated from university, I knew that I wanted to do something that would make a difference. I'd also worked my way through university uh, in sales roles. So I managed a garden center, did garden, like did sales for garden center in high school. Then I worked part-time at Leon's Furniture while I was putting myself through school. And in the 20 hours at Leon's, I would sell almost as much as the regular team. <laughs> so I'm part-time going to school and in furniture sales of all things, right? So the natural segue for me was how do I take my education and apply that to something that I wanted to make a difference in? And I ended up in pharmaceutical sales. And I really, the best part about being a pharmaceutical rep, you have the fancy car, you got the expense account, you get to dress up nicely. It was just wonderful. And I was one of the top reps in the, in the company fairly quickly. And I think the, I attribute that and the success there was I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I didn't know the playbook. I didn't know the rule book. I didn't know, no, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. Said who? So because I didn't know the rules, I broke them all the time. And, you know, I also think that it attributed to my ability to really create, um, I wanted to make a difference for the, the, the doctors that were serving patients that had complicated issues. And we sold diabetes care products and heart, heart products. So it was about my message and the results that I wanted to help those physicians and the nursing teams support. And I think that's what helped me really early on is I had a different intention than looking at, you know, what's my bonus going to be. Yeah. To me, I was just grateful I had a job, but I was grateful that I could do something that I loved. Yeah. And then one day they had, um, they brought us all to Jasper. I don't know if you've ever been on one of those company wide retreats. I have, they yeah. bring the entire company together. And this is the first time I'm 21 years old. I'm sitting there and they introduce us to this transformational coach. I'm like, what's a transformational coach? Does anybody know what that is? And nobody knew what that was. They kept saying things like, don't drink the Kool-Aid. And I'm like, I don't know what the Kool-Aid is, but I like what this guy's saying. And I was sitting in my chair and I'm like, ah, this isn't my chair. That's my seat. And so I asked him after, I said, how do I learn to do what you do? How did you, how did you follow into this? Like, how did you get here? And he essentially said, he showed me what to do. And within a couple of years, I was one of the youngest um, public program leaders for a public company. So by the time I was 24, I'm now leading international programs, speaking to people and coaching them. And I'm still holding down my pharmaceutical day job. So that was the beginning. Yeah. Right? That's a, it's a powerful story because there's a lot of people in that position right now, especially with COVID, that are trying to pivot, trying to decide, what do we do? Yeah. Do I make the leap? Do I stay where I am? So it's amazing that you did. Do you miss the direct sales, the B2B? Do you miss being in the industry? No, because I still sell every day. Yeah. I just sell myself yeah. or I work with my clients on their sales. Sales is, you know, the industry, you're just, it's a service industry now. Yeah. But I also work with a lot of clients that are putting together B2B or I have diversity in the business that I do all the time. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned the transition. So let's talk a little bit about that. I got really, I got lucky and I've been doing, you know, coaching since I was 20, 24, mm -hmm. literally. And 
that took something to be able to walk into a CEO's office. Um, one, I'm a female. Two, I'm working with C-suite people now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I have to, you know, provide something that I've never provided before. It wasn't like selling, but I was now on the hook for selling myself, my services. And I had to come up against that every day. Yeah. And when I made the transition from the pharmaceutical industry into consulting full time, I went on my own. Somebody was in my seminar. I think I shared this story with you. And if I didn't, I, if I did, if you heard it, I apologize. No, nope, but someone was hear in it. my seminar and he came to me and he said, um, do you think you could do this in our company? We really need this kind of thinking and shift in perception in the company. And, they'd, and I'm like, sure, yes, like any great entrepreneur. And I had no idea what I was doing. Again, don't know the playbook, don't know the rules of consulting. And so when I didn't know what I didn't know, I jumped into that and I left pharmaceutical, left the, the six figure job, left the car, left the benefits. My family thought I was crazy. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you've got the dream job. Why would you leave that? Because that wasn't my dream. Yeah. I had a bigger one. Yeah. And so I went into that, it was a Fortune 500 here in Canada. They have a red sign, I'm sure you can figure it out. And uh, it was great because I, it was the most inventive period of my life because every day I was inventing something new. Yeah. You fast forward to where we are now with COVID. Yes, there's an incredible amount of stress and struggle, but right now we are all in the same position. Mm -hmm. We're all inventing something that we have never faced yet. Yeah. And when people say, oh, this is history repeating itself. No, it's not. Nowhere in a period of history has something like this happened on this global of a level ever yeah. with the level of technology that we have available and with everything that is happening. No one, you know, you can't say it's like history. This is new. And if you approach it from that newness, that's what will make the difference for people. And I think that's about reinvention. Yeah. Does that make sense? hundred percent. I, I talk about it actually in my content about being, you know, reinventing transitions. I, I mean, it's, if you're not doing it right now, whether you're switching industries or switching companies or whatever you may be doing, if you're not reinventing yourself or looking at options to be better than where you were pre COVID, yeah. you're, you're going to struggle coming out of this. Yeah. So you transition, you get out of pharmaceutical sales and you jump in and start your own consulting company, contrast results group, which is, then it wasn't called contrast results group then. Okay. No, it was just my own company. It was actually called Chrysalis. Um, yeah. <laughs> transformation. Nice. I won't get into it. It's been long <laughs> since retired. Yeah. And then I got bought. Oh, okay. All right. So Contrast Results Group now. Talk to us a little bit about what it is, who they are, what you do. Where's your lane? Where do you focus on? You're up in the Great White North where we are, where I am, which uh, it's great to have a fellow Canadian on. Um, but yeah, talk to us a little bit about what you guys do, what your focus is yeah. and, and who your target audience is. Sure. I think so. Uh, you know, contrast as it sits now has only been reinvented since 2017 and I had retired. So we have three children and a lot of people listening to your show may be looking at, okay, we're talking about transitions. What are the kinds of transitions that people go through? Well, having children is one of them, especially if you're a woman, more women take time off and periods out of their careers to have their children. And when we added our third child to the mix, I said to my husband, that's it. I'm, I'm hanging up my consulting hat. I was a senior partner in an international consulting company and I sold my shares back to the other partners. And I said, I'm done, I'm retiring. And a client called me in 2016, very early on. And he said, um, I'm going through, a, I've hit a bit of a wall. I'm at a crossroads and I need to talk to my coach. Well, I hadn't talked to him in probably seven years. Oh, wow. And I'm like, we haven't spoken in seven years and you still call me your coach? He goes, yeah, I hear your voice in my head every day. You're my coach. <laughs> and I went, wow. So that I, I left that, I got off the phone, I walked out of my office and my husband's like, you're glowing. What's going on? And I said, oh, I talked to this client and he said, it's time maybe to step back into the ring. And it didn't take much to convince me. So I, I really just, all I did in the first year is I changed my LinkedIn profile. It, you know, I had 40 clients within the first week. 
I thought, okay, I can do this. I didn't have a brand. I didn't have a sales team. I didn't have a company. I didn't have, I didn't even have a website. And then in 2017, I decided if I'm going to do this, I'm really going to reinvent who I am and I better get some coaching on how to do that. Cause I, at that point, the whole era of digital footprint and social media and marketing, that was just really coming on strong. It was, you know, wasn't necessarily used as such a mainstream tool as it is now. Yeah. And I had no idea. So there was like, I have no idea what I don't know. And I know I need some help. And so I hired a coach to really help me rebuild and reinvent and rebrand my own company and myself in a way that I had not yet done. Cause I'd worked in fortune 500s. I'd worked with small consulting companies, boutique consulting companies. I'd owned my own firm. I've sold firms. I work with other large um, international consulting. So I'd, I'd really run the gamut and had many transitions and changes throughout my career. Yeah. And coaching always being at the center of that. And I, when I went in, I thought, what is the thing that I want to be able to impact the most? And really it is the entrepreneur or that mid-sized company. So small and mid-sized businesses. And my why is because I know that they're hungry for change yeah. and they will be held to account for the results. So it's not a waste. It's not yeah. a lack of accountability and it's fun and people are engaging and they want to strive for something that is purposeful and has meaning. Yeah. And that for me was that reinvention. So contrast, actually the name of contrast is the distinction of illuminating something that you cannot see. Nice. So, That's very cool. Yeah. And so what do we do? We illuminate in business and for leaders what they can't see. So they're blind spots yeah. or things that they might not even have thought of or that aha breakthrough moment. So, Let's talk a little bit, you, you hit something there, that it, social media, LinkedIn, all the, the, the digital ways of tracking leads now wasn't so prevalent even, which is crazy to think even only two and a half years ago, um, yeah. as much as it is right now, and probably more now in the last eight to nine weeks than it Oh ever. my gosh, it's flooded. It's crazy. It's insane. If you're a digital marketer, you're winning. And if you're not winning, you need a coach. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Seriously. And for all of us, we get those inbox infills every day of digital marketing people and coaches. And, and you know what? It's good on them. Um, they're reaching out and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and trying to connect and build relationships and build a target audience and business. And that's all, uh, it's all positive and they should be doing that. So when we look at it now, with social media so prevalent, with Zoom now could be the new norm of doing a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of business. Yeah. Talk to me about relationships. How, how critical are relationships to you, the development? How important is human interaction versus the social side? Um, you know, it's, it's going to change a little bit, but how do you kind of see yourself adapting and, and where do you see it going from here? For me, authentic relationships have always been at the heart of everything that I do. So building and creating relationships that make a difference and relationships that create big impact. Yeah. And that to me is at the heart. And that's why I actually struggle with social media because I see so much fluff and garbage in social media. Yeah. And I uh, try to really stay very true to myself, true to my authenticity and true to our brand that we created. It has, it has to be authentic or I won't do it. And, you know, I don't flood my clients with massive, marketing emails and I'm not probably as prevalent as I could be. Mm. You know, I'm not, I'm not there as much as I'm seeing everybody jumping on and offering all this stuff right now. And it is a bit of a choice. It's also been a bit of a, in the last eight to 12 weeks, doing great content on social media that's going to make an impact on someone that actually adds value to them takes a lot of time. Yeah. And it takes a lot of consideration instead of just throwing something out there because it's like, looks pretty or it, it's interesting. It, well, it has to be interesting or <laughs> they won't read it. Yeah. But I think that I'm very careful of. And in the last 12 to eight weeks, I've been so busy getting our team is just even trying to catch up with my brand voice because I'm on coaching calls and on webinars and leading sessions. You know, there was a time for two weeks where it was 12 to 14 hours a day. Yeah. And so I'm a little behind myself in some of those things. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think anybody's missing it, <laughs> you know, 
at all because what you said is more important to me and it's building those authentic relationships and i know that the work that i've done in the last eight weeks is all about that it's, yeah it's all about connectivity and building rapport yeah it's it's funny i was on the weekend sitting with my my wife and i hadn't put a post out in two days and i had this anxiety level to just <laughs> up on me and I, yeah that it's, it's like oh my god yeah they're gonna forget me <laughs> and then she's like, it's only two days. You'll be fine. You've just been busy and that's okay too. You got to prioritize. So actually a little off script, the, the question goes to you is what, what kind of advice do you give to somebody that is reaching out, is doing what they're doing on LinkedIn, posting, being consistent? Um, is there an opportunity for these types of people to become successful? What do they got to do in your opinion to keep building their brand? I think there's a few things. One is find your own natural voice. Don't try to be a guru or something that you're not and don't pretend um, because people see through the fluff of that really quickly. If you're just starting out and you're building your brand, find your voice and then create content that is relevant to your authentic voice. Yep. You don't have to be the everything to everyone, but maybe start with one really very good key niche message and then expand it and build an ecosystem from there. Yep. Um, I see so many people try to be everything to everyone, especially let's just take the case of, of I work with a lot of coaches. I am a master coach. So a lot of people will come to me because there's, you know, it's very challenging to transition from being in a corporate environment. Let's say you're masterful at marketing and you want to now coach people on how to be a marketer. They're not the same skill. Yeah. Being able to do marketing is not the same as being able to coach people on their digital strategy or coach them on their business development and what that brand message and marketing could look like mm -hmm. it. You have to learn the skills. So learn new skills based on what your authenticity is and what your business is. So that, that has to be really clear. Do you know your skills or learn them? And there's so much available to learn now. So I, I really am kind of um, a stickler on it. It's that authenticity. And if you don't know it, don't, don't make it up. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out because there are people smarter than you that can help you and they will <laughs> if you ask. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Like, don't tell me you're going to help me with my YouTube channel. I get this all the time. We're going to build your YouTube channel and you're going to be a rock star on YouTube. Okay, when I don't really know that I want to be a rock star on YouTube, but I do know I do know I need that brand image out there and it's not there yet. Yeah. But then when I go and I, I peel back the layers of the onion, like, who else have you worked with? No one. And I look at their own YouTube channel and there's no content in it. It's like, but well, you're going to build my brand? Yeah. Yeah, there's... You, you, yeah. buyer beware right now. <laughs> so what's next for you, your company that um, you just mentioned, you were overwhelmingly busy, which is yeah. amazing. Um, but where do you go from here? What's next for you guys? For us, it's really about building the consulting team out, building the coach because our consulting is a coach based approach to consulting and then being able to continue helping um, business owners implement I think execution and implementation are critical. Yeah. Uh, but the, before even that, it's helping uh, clients, one, get through this piece. So a lot of coaching. I also am shifting from doing one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching to more kind of um, team building. I've always done more teams and things like that. Um, but being able to do a lot more of what I do and replicate myself yeah. in new ways that I hadn't, hadn't even thought of, I'm working on a new app which is exciting. So paired with, and it's not your typical, I'm seeing so many people come out with like, buy my online course and buy my webinar and buy this. And I do have some of those elements, but my target market is business owners and senior level leaders as well. Yeah. And so they're not necessarily, that's not what they want. They want to deep dive into their business where somebody can, you know, take it, get to the heart of the matter and the problem in the business and work with that team yeah. and really help them come up with solutions. So that's what we're, we're really focused on that inside out approach to consulting and to making things happen and really executing on that and in delivering results. If it's not tied to a result, don't do it. Yeah. Everything needs to be measured 
everything needs to be measured. Yeah. So. Um, that's very cool. That's very cool. Before we wrap up, I always finish with three rapid fire questions. Sure. Um, but before we go there, where can we find you? Uh, where oh. can the audience, and I'll put these in the show notes, but where can we find you? Great. Uh, you can find me at contrastresultsgroup.com. So that's our website. You can find me on Facebook. It's Christine Nielsen. It's spelled the Danish way, N-I-E-L-S-E-N. Yep, Instagram, I was correct. Instagram, it's Coach C Official. If you yep. want to listen, I also have a podcast. And uh, if you want to listen to the Coach C podcast, we just did a new series on Reboot, which is about, you know, really we're working with business owners and leaders right now and talking about what does it look like to reset, reinvent, and reboot yourself. So that's the Coach C podcast. And you can also find me on YouTube. Excellent. I'm everywhere. Listen, actually, I did, I did listen to your podcast, the Coach C. I listened to the, uh, the uh, I forget her name, but the HR consultant or HR. Uh, She's yeah. actually a part of our team. You see, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a great interview. So I'll have that in the show notes. So three questions we always ask. The first one's, it'll have to change eventually, but what's the first thing you're going to do when you do get out of COVID, uh, out of isolation? What is the first thing I think? Um, I'm probably going to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> like really like two of uh, like i'm probably gonna go shopping physically at a mall physically go to a mall isn't that terrible <laughs> like, I, no it's it, it, you'd be surprised the answers i get from haircut to i just kind of miss the experience of looking at the clothes and and being in the mall <laughs> hey that's uh it's it's a great answer trust me i think there's a lot of people waiting for that one um, and lunch with my friends <laughs> while we go shopping. I know, I know. I'm, I'm so waiting to get back to a restaurant. I yes, I just want to break bread with someone, you know. Exactly. Um, if somebody were to rate a book about you, what would they title it? Oh, God. How about Hurricane Christine? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. Last one. What advice would you give, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Yeah, I love this question. And here's why. Don't leave anything on the table. Don't ever let any fear, any preconceived notion that you can't stop you. Yeah. And there were many things in my career that I left on the table. And I don't regret that. But if I could turn back time, I certainly would have gone for it at a much higher level much earlier on. That's a great answer. Great answer. Great advice. And I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're extremely busy. Um, but thank you so much for coming. I'm on. excited to have you on the Coach C podcast. I look forward to it. Absolutely. Anytime, <laughs> without a doubt. Thank you so much again. Thanks, John.